Hey guys, just gonna give it a couple minutes here and we'll get started. Just gonna open up Zoom and then we'll get started in a few minutes. There we go, we got some people joining. Hey Noah, how's it going? Thanks for joining. I'm catching some of your DJ shows too, so that's a lot of fun to watch. All right, we got some people coming in. Oh, hi, Hala, I say hi too. How are you? Thanks for coming. Um, yeah, headaches is gonna be the, the main part of today. Types of headaches, differences between migraines and headaches and things like that, so I was gonna say if anyone wants to join me live and talk about a headache, they can. So either Brooke or Kirsten can just walk through a headache that they've had. It should be pretty straightforward, but I can understand if you guys might be shy. Nothing about headaches? Come on guys, everyone's a bad headache. Wish I could just throw people under the bus. Like currently, I have a headache. But it's probably because I'm not drinking enough water, so I'm gonna drink some of that up. Without spilling it all over the place. Steven. Work gives me one so I don't go there. <laughs> That's a good response. My work's giving me a headache too, Steven, so don't worry about it. <clears throat> so, what do we have here? I went to two straight years with migraines every day without fail. That's quite a bit, yeah, that's, that's definitely chronic because it's over three months, so, and now they're, they're better, Noah? How are they feeling now? Been three years since. Okay, well that's good. Well, that, that, so that means you're not having them anymore, Noah. I hope you're not having them anymore. So yeah, we're going to talk about headaches. Very common. <clears throat> I think there's a stat that says like 90%. Everyone's had a headache um, at least once, and that's 90% of the population that it shows. So. Nope, thankfully. Okay, good. No one's migraine free, which is great. So yeah, like 90% of the population experiences a headache uh, or a migraine at one point of their life. So pretty, pretty high rate in terms of if you think of um, like an injury perspective. So that's quite high. Just like ankle sprains are quite high. Um, certain knee conditions are quite high. So um, yeah, sorry, I had a question on zoom at the base of the skull headache yeah so there's different types of headaches different and the, usually the types are i will get into the categories like a primary headache versus a secondary one um and then we'll go into 
with the secondary, like a lot of headaches are classified uh, by the region. So like a suborbital headache, um, suboccipital headache, um, like temporal headaches, frontal headaches. So uh, those, that, that first word just kind of explains the region of where you feel the headache. It might not be due to the, the it might not be the cause of the headache. So um, the big thing is, is to, to know what type of headache you have and then to try some treatment for it. So we're just going to give live a couple more minutes and see if uh, we get some more people joining in. It seems like it's like not frozen, but Some more people coming in, so I'll give it a few more minutes. Um, if anyone wants to tell me their headache story, you can let me know. Um, happens to, to quite a few people, but uh, yeah. Live, it's taking this time today, so <laughs> let me go with screen sharing, so we'll get started in a minute. And then tomorrow we got uh, lifting. So we got some squatting patterns and things like that. So we're gonna look at hip issues um, affecting squats. A lot of people have issues getting depth in squats or they're getting pain in their hip flexor area. So we're gonna go over some stuff for that. Um, we have Farmstrong Athletics that are, is gonna join us. Evan, if you remember Evan from a week ago, he was, uh, he went on live with me, so we talked a little bit about recovery, so active recovery, uh, cold water and stuff like that. So it'd be interesting to get his perspective as a coach um, and then our perspective as physios and kind of how to work together. So I think a lot of that should be done. So um, I think it's gonna be an interesting topic, so we should do that tomorrow. Um, and we got some more people joining in. So yeah, squatting for tomorrow. Laura that just jo joined in. Um, from a lifting perspective. So I do quite a bit of research on that. So we should be able to help you guys get lower in squats. Um, initially when I started squatting, couldn't get down very low. Now I can, you know, have my feet planted, squat down and, and do various tasks if I need to. So um, yeah, but today's headache. So we'll get into that um, right now actually. So let me, point the camera the other way. I'm gonna grab it. You guys can see my terrible hair day. So, okay. I'm gonna point this right over here. So, headaches. Very simple word. So, a pain in the head. So, um, we have two categories of headaches. Or pain in the head so primary headaches and that's not the result of another medical condition so that means it's coming from the head um, it's it's it does it's not coming from you know a car accident like an impact to the head a concussion that kind of stuff or another area of the body so two two uh, categories and that's migraines and tension type headaches so migraines and tension headaches are gonna be primary headaches Secondary headaches are headaches attributed to trauma. So a lot of people that I see from car accidents, uh, if they got in a, a pretty rough motor vehicle accident, hit their head, um, a lot of times they don't even hit their heads and they still have chronic headaches. Uh, cranial or vascular disorder, so cervicogenic headaches, so uh, issues with a, with a neck would be considered a secondary headache, infection, uh, or due to disorder of the neck, face, TMJ, eyes and nose. Um, so I see a lot of headaches from the TMJ area. So I'll flip this back to me. So in my practice, I see a lot of um, TMD cases or temporomandibular joint disorders. And I find a lot of headaches from that region. So that would still be considered a secondary headache because it's coming from the jaw um, or the assumption is it's coming from the jaw. So um, the categories are important. I mean, you don't have to categorize everyone into it, but it can help a little bit because if you think someone has um, a primary headache and it's actually coming from the jaw, then you might miss 
the jaw. So you might not be treating the right area. So um, it's important to know the type of headache so you treat the right, the right area. Um, yeah, so we'll go into tension headaches. So one of the primary headaches is a tension type headache. So most common type of headache can affect all aspects of life. So we see it in individuals that are young, old, um, middle aged. Uh, so I've, I've worked with patients for headaches from as young as like seven to as old as 99. So um, yeah, people miss work due to this too. So people often think um, migraines are, are affecting work, which is, is, is true, but a lot of the times people can miss work. Um, so a lot of lost time. Chronic headaches is 15 or, or more days out of the month for three consecutive months of having uh, headaches. So that's when you get um, labeled or diagnosed with chronic headaches. Um, yeah, intermittent headaches, you could have episodic headaches. That's gonna be less than that 15 day window. 38% um, of individuals experience tension headaches in a given year. So that's quite common. You can see that these types of headaches do occur frequently. Um, and it's important to, to know that because then you can do quite a few things to, to help, so to treat it. So possible areas of pain, we see it often upper back and neck, base of the head, ears, above the ears, the jaw, above the eyes. Um, and people often indicate that there's pressure around the head or neck, can experience mild nausea um, if it's chronic. So if it's a chronic type of headache, you can experience mild nausea. A lot of people think that it's just migraines, but it can happen in tension headaches. So triggers, stress, depression, anxiety, sustained postures, sleeping in awkward positions, eye strain, drugs, alcohol, overexertion, skipping meals. So you can see quite a few different triggers. Um, they don't know the exact triggers, but they know there's various types, right? So for, for individuals with headaches, everyone has their own triggers. Um, me, I guess it's stress. <laughs> so if I get um, quite a quite a high level of stress, I'll get a headache instantly. Depending on who's calling my phone, sometimes there's certain certain individuals. There's only a couple that if they if they pop if they pop up on my caller ID, I'll get a headache right away. So I will not name those people. Um, so triggers can be diverse, right? There's can be so many triggers and it's good to know what your triggers are. That's why I always tell people to do like journals and stuff like that. So if you do pain journals and stuff like that, or call it a headache journal, you can often figure out what your triggers are. Just like how we talked about journaling for, for running um, or for back pain. So you can often find out, hey, well, stress is a trigger or I missed lunch every day of the week and I've had headaches. So important to know your triggers. That's I guess the first big thing is to to, you know, as annoying as it is to write those things down, write those things down and, uh, and see what your triggers are. So um, mine might be stress, other people might be anxiety, some others might be just exertion or going to the gym too hard or something like that. So um, good, to, good to know. The causes of tension headaches, um, they think could be related to muscular tone or even neurotransmitter balance. So still not well, well understood, but they know there's certain behaviors of tension type headaches um, and that's the important thing to know and to manage it. So later we'll get into some exercise and why physio helps and you can see why and, and research wise how, how physio can help. So let's go to the next slide. So now we have migraine. So another type of primary headache. <clears throat> so primary headache, migraine, um, you have Neurovascular pain syndrome. So this is a centrist nervous, nervous system issue. Um, so it's a bit different than attention type headache. Four to 72 hours is the, sorry, I spelled severe wrong, but four to 72 hours could be the duration of migraines. And you saw headaches could be like seven days or more, often unilateral, so meaning on one side of the head, um, but not always the case. A lot of the times it's also very specific, like you can pinpoint the area that's hurting versus uh, tension type headache could be just like a diffuse, diverse type of pain. Uh, you get quite a bit of throbbing with this one, so like an intense throbbing, jabbing type of pain. Uh, you get autonomic symptoms, so meaning nausea, sensitivity to light, sound, or odors. Uh, not so common with attention type headaches. And 12% of people experience migraines at one point of their life. There's also the aura, which people may have heard, 
Um, and that happens 20 minutes to one hour before the pain begins. So this is where you get flashes of light, blind spots, lines, or other visual changes. So you can see quite a few different things um, change with vision. This is, it's difficult to see, but this kind of shows, is it a headache or a migraine? So um, intense pulsing throbbing is typically gonna be a migraine versus mild dull pressure is gonna be a headache. I know it's difficult to see. Um, yeah, and then are they felt throughout the forehead or scalp? Yes, more likely a headache. One side of the head, yes, more likely a migraine. Um, the additional symptoms throughout the body, such as nausea, dizziness, flashes of lights or blind spots, that's more indicative of migraine. So kind of a nice flow chart on, on how things work. So um, I can send that picture to, to individuals if they want. I know it's hard to see, so sorry about that, but um, tension, headaches, migraines. So migraines is gonna be primarily one-sided. Um, headaches can be diffuse on both sides. And the migraines, typically you have the nausea, changes of vision, sensitivity to light and things like that. So important to keep track of that. So tension, headaches. So here you can see on the left, possible areas of pain is upper back, neck, base of head, ears, above the ears, jaw, and above the eyes. So that's gonna be a tension type headache. So you can see the pain is quite diffuse, a lot of different areas. Um, to the right, you have uh, another type of tension headache. So I'm sorry, this is a cervicogenic headache. So a little bit different. So this would be a secondary type of headache. So here you have a uh, cervicogenic headache, meaning issues with the neck. So you can see it's above the eyes. You got the back of the head, you even have some pain down in the neck. Um, top of the head as well. So you can see there's quite a few different areas that can cause or that you, you notice a headache. So tension headaches, here's all the different types of tension headaches. You have TMJ, so pain at the temples, front of the ears, sinus, behind the brow note, bone or the cheekbone, uh, tension, squeezing in the head, migraine, pain, nausea, and visual changes are typical of classic form, and then neck. So Here's another picture that shows kind of the differences. So again, migraines very localized, one spot versus headache is kind of more diffuse. Um, migraines can affect vision. There could be light sensitivity, heightened sense of smell, no relief from painkillers and could cause nausea and vomiting, which are key characteristics of migraines. So headaches doesn't typically affect vision, no light sensitivity, no heightened sense of smell, can be relieved by painkillers and doesn't cause nausea and vomiting. So yeah, so that's pretty interesting to just kind of differentiate between the types of headaches. It's good to know. Um, yeah, because migraines a lot of the times are managed with medication, but a lot of people don't know you can get physio for it. So um, sometimes they get patients saying, hey, I have a migraine and I heard physio is not gonna be helpful uh, versus people that, that have headaches. So some individuals think headaches might be treated better by a physio than migraines, but I think both would be appropriate to treat. It just depends if you're getting better or not. So um, if you're seeing a physio and you're not noticing these huge benefits, then it might be a good idea to change the treatment program and communicate with your physio and say, hey, these things are not working. Can we try something else? So um, a lot of people get into like needling techniques for this acupuncture, uh, but it shows like the core basis of physio is gonna be the biggest thing. So. There was an article, and I'll read off the computer here, that is called Efficacy of Interventions Used by Physiotherapists for Patients with Headache and Migraines. Uh, this is a systematic review and a meta-analysis, so uh, quite a large study. So this looked at the intensity, the frequency, duration of migraines, tension headaches, and cervicogenic headaches. So migraines and tension headaches being primary headaches, and the cervicogenic headaches being the secondary headaches. So it looked at, I mean the main ones <laughs> and cervicogenic headaches so i think they just took the most common types of headaches um, and they looked at so physio was labeled as exercise manual therapy soft tissue techniques strength endurance training and education so all the stuff that we're trained um, to do so a lot of the times people think it's exercise only or manual therapy only or soft tissue techniques only. So I think it's gonna be a combination of all of that. And this, this study indicates that as well. So it kind of further proves uh, our effective techniques and, and, and being medical pro 
professionals in, in this kind of field. So outcome measures was a visual analog scale, so a zero to 10 scale of pain. Um, and then frequency and duration was just recorded. So frequency was either recorded number of times per week or number of times per month. And duration was recorded in hours or days. So those were the outcome measures and it showed significant reductions in all areas. So um, that's great to know. And then I also had some more uh, specific things. So not only did it reduce in all areas, it showed manual therapy uh, for reducing tension type headaches uh, had the biggest effect on frequency and duration. So manual therapy for frequency and duration tension type headaches. So that had the biggest effect and on all outcomes of cervicogenic headaches. So that's important to know as well. And trigger point therapy for reduction of intensity of tension type headaches and cervicogenic headaches. So doing the manual therapy, trigger point therapy showed significant improvements uh, in types of pain. Manual therapy, yes, it can be conducted by a physio, um, but this myofascial release can be done by you at home. So yes, one of the manual therapy, you need to go see a physio, you need to go to a clinic. But if they teach you the right techniques to do at home for trigger point release, then you have that type of like you have some sort of manual therapy at home so you got some sort of relief um yeah so it's an interesting article to to kind of gear our specific techniques that we teach patients and perform ourselves and how it affects different types of headaches so for migraines it did show that um a combined approach so doing these techniques along with exercise so they found aerobic exercise was going to be the best for reducing the frequency and duration and intensity of migraines. So um, yeah, so people often say exercise isn't gonna help for, for migraines, but I think, well, I've always educated patients in the benefits of exercise, but this is another article that shows, hey, exercise is good for um, headaches. And it's a frequent theme that we see in, in all the talks that we do every day is exercise helps everything pretty much, the right type of exercise. So. Yeah, that was interesting to see. It didn't go through the specific exercises that were performed by the physios in this study. So, um, yeah, so it didn't go through like, here's the neck side flexion or here's like a peanut ball for rolling out the back of the neck, but it just meant um, exercise in general. So um, the limitation of the study was to get a more specific program for like if you had a specific manual therapy program and exercise program for cervicogenic headaches and for tension type headaches and for migraines, um, it would be good to um, they're good to be know a little bit more. But again, every article or every research study is limited, so that kind of helps us kind of have a better idea to go in the future. So, um, yeah. So I have a question here on on Zoom. So Lisa here, sinus headaches, have had headaches my whole life, tried chiro, massage, physio, needling, et cetera. Other solutions also have, okay. So other solutions. So you've tried chiro, massage, physio, needling. Um, I'd go back to your family physician. Um, maybe you need to see a specialist or something like that. If medications haven't worked, then um, it's, it's tough to answer that question because it's quite a bit of details that I do, do need to, to give you a good answer. I mean, I would say go back to your family physician and maybe get referred to a specialist. I know there are specialists for that, um, like head and neck and sinus specialists, so that might be a good idea to, to see. So um, it doesn't mean physio is always gonna be the right pick in terms of like everyone's gonna benefit off of it, but it's, it's, it's worth a shot. So it seems like you did try physio um, and needling and things like that. So I think, yeah, best to go to your physician um, I do have Bhavan on here, so if she wants to go live with me, she, she could hit that button. Um, I know you've had headaches for a long time, so you can kind of explain your story if you like. That's your call though, so I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Um, and we'll kind of start going through some exercises for that. So a lot of the headaches I see are related to motor vehicle accidents, so secondary headaches, um, and with TMD issues. So. Some of the exercises I've covered in the previous, what it was two weeks ago that I did the TMD talk, um, I will cover some of those exercises in, in this demonstration, along with some new ones for the neck. So, and more specific ones like neck wise. 
stretch out your muscles, right? Like do your side flexion stretch, hold for 30 seconds, the other way, hold for 30 seconds. Those ones everyone's have done. Other ones you can do is trigger point release. So doing, um, whether you have like a small ball and rolling it in the back of the head. So the base of the skull, that's where you want to line it up to. Trigger points being areas of tight muscles, so taut myofascia. So you're pushing in, holding till the pain goes away, releasing, going to the next spot, holding till the pain goes away, next spot and so forth. We've done this quite a few times, getting down into your traps as well, which is a good technique. Another one I like doing, I like showing lots of patients is with a towel. So pretty easy. Most people have a towel at home. Um, and, and this is a good way to get some effective manual therapy at home. So what I do is I twist. So what I do, so let's say this is my right hand, this is my left hand. So I'm rotating towards the right and along my jawbone, I'm kind of pulling the towel to the other direction. So giving it a little bit of a stretch or overpressure. So sorry, there's a comment. Still struggling, but definitely find stretches and exercise along with meds for migraines. Specialists are taking edge off migraine. Yeah, that's true. So even Noah earlier mentioned he had migraines for, for, for two years and now he's been good for three years. So oftentimes it is a combined approach. So you need the physio, you need the exercise and like especially with migraines, medication is, is not a bad idea. Same with headaches. So um, a combined approach is good. That's good management. A lot of people say they just want one thing that fixes it all, but not often the case. You got to find your program that works best. So good job, Bobby. Good job, cousin, sister. <laughs> We got family on this. So kind of rotating towards one way and following with, so don't choke yourself out with this one. A lot of people, I tell them just to, I don't print off pictures for this one just cause it looks like someone's just trying to strangle themselves. So rotating one way, holding for 10 seconds and then rotating the other way, holding for 10 seconds. Really good exercise you could do. I'm um, sorry, that was a nice, thank you for the smiley face and hearts. <laughs> Um, you could also do combined. So if you're finding you're stiff, so a cervicogenic headache, a big difference between that headache and a tension type headache is that your range of motion is going to be limited in your neck. So you're actually going to be not be able to move as well as you could um, normally or without a headache. So cervicogenic headache means there's an issue with the neck and that's causing the headache. So the, the area stemming from is the neck. So if you got some stiffness, right, you're not moving properly and you notice a headache, try to do this exercise, try to get it moving. So if you find that looking up and around to the corner, like kind of like this motion is limited, you can do this exercise in that motion too. So you can combine different motions. So here we have rotation and extension and a bit of side flexion. You can kind of get all motions combined. Just got to be careful with it and not cause more pain. So I'm holding for about 10 seconds, relaxing, holding for about 10 seconds, relaxing, doing that a few times. That's a really good exercise to do. I like that one. Like it's, I like cheap, like I discussed last week for recovery. So a towel is pretty easy, right? So if it's coming down and towards the corner, you can do that exercise. So you can kind of mobilize the different segments of your neck, right? So your neck has multiple levels of a vertebrae and this can help mobilize it. Yes, it's not going to be as specific as like a physio's hands, but it can give you some relief at home. So if you find your neck stiff, your neck is sore, and you have headaches kind of in the back of the head, side of the head, top of the head, could be a cervicogenic headache. So good idea to try um, with mobility. So another one you could do is looking up and pulling the towel just straight up gently. This is kind of an indirect way to give yourself some traction at home. So. Some people have tried traction machines at physio, essentially just kind of pulls your head apart, tries to rip your head off your body essentially. So um, traction is, is a treatment that can work. So essentially I just tell patients, hey, if traction helps, then just kind of just keep doing it. So um, if it does help in clinic, like we don't have a traction machine here, for example, but I know a lot of physio clinics that do even treating in the past, if traction works, then I would just get people on the traction machine. If it didn't, then I would, you know, try something else. Thoughts on ice versus heat before, after stretching. From what I've looked at, a lot of the studies used ice over heat. I think that's more so to decrease the blood flow to the area, thereby helping the pain. So I would say um, ice would be good to start with. And I know you you're, you're have a chronic migraine, meaning it's over three months. So I would try both. So at that point, chronically, it's just whatever works for you. So I would just try 
the stretching and then try some before and after, before or after, and see how it goes, right? If you're stretching the muscles in your neck, it might be a good idea to put heat on before. Um, and then you don't have to put ice on, on the neck muscles necessarily. You could put ice on the head or the back of the head and see how that feels. So try combining different things, try playing around with it. Oftentimes, like there's certain ways we instruct clients and patients, but it doesn't mean it's gonna be what's best for them. So it's, it's good to kind of experiment. Hopefully that answers that. Um, yeah, so try to maybe put some heat on the neck, then do your stretches. And then if need be, put some ice on your head or the back of the head. Um, or don't even use ice at the end, just kind of put some heat on before stretching or activity. So doing these stretches is good. So grabbing the towel, looking up a little bit, and you just want to be careful with this one. The towel is going to kind of come at the bottom of like the base of your skull and you just kind of pull up gently, hold for 10 seconds, relax, pull up gently, hold it for 10 seconds, relax. I do that a few times. Do you typically, so this is a question from from Laura, do you typically discuss anything regarding nutrition or it depends on patient specific triggers? Uh, nutrition I'll discuss a bit of, like I'm one of those people that just stays in my scope. So people often ask me about like what diet do I follow or what do I do? And I, I, give, I give them the truth, but I, I don't tell them to like follow what I do because that might not be the best for them. So um, like one case for instance was a patient, this was like a few years ago and we we're treating her headaches. Motor vehicle collision was the, the, the mechanism of her injury. And she came for quite some time and headaches was a common issue. And then if we kind of figured out through a journal was that she f missed a meal, like she didn't eat breakfast every day. Um, and then kind of told her, hey, like maybe you should start eating breakfast. And she, she agreed and headaches were managed. Like they didn't go away completely, but they were significantly reduced. So um, yeah, nutrition, I'll just say eat your regular meals. Um, so I'll tell people to go back and say, hey, has anything changed since your headaches or before your headaches started? Uh, maybe like a giant, like so we talk about stress being a trigger. So the stress could have caused someone to eat less and then kind of just feeding each other and, and, and causing the headaches to get worse. So yeah, nutrition wise, I would just say for them to be eating regularly. Um, yeah, so, and it depends on triggers too. So. Yeah, like if, if, if they bring it up, <clears throat> then it's good. It's good to mention it anyways, just that they're eating regularly. If they're drinking water regularly too, I know you can have headaches due to dehydration, which would be a secondary headache, wouldn't be a primary cause. Um, but yeah, a good idea to discuss nutrition and hydration with individuals. And then if you have more concerns, maybe refer them to like a nutritionist that can help. So looking at the interdisciplinary care and, and a team approach, um, I, um, Sorry, a dietitian or a nutritionist would be would be a good idea to go with. Hopefully that answers it. But <laughs> I know I, get, I feel like I give all these vague answers sometimes, and and I know if I was working with somebody specifically here in person, I could give more you know more education based on them because I'll know the history, right? So as a physio, we do a pretty detailed history with a patient when they first come in and discuss you know like what's your pain like, what makes it worse, what makes it better, um, how does it behave day to day, all these details on their injury. And then we discuss like their personal life, like what do you like doing uh, for activity and, and get a really good snapshot of a person um, in a first assessment. Then you know kind of like what other questions you can kind of gear towards them. So um, if you notice that they're, you know, might be under a lot of stress, you can talk about that a little bit more and have your referral sources too, right? Like I work with some counselors and psychologists in the city, um, nutritionists as well, so then I can refer them on if, if need be, uh, and appropriately too. So that way you're giving a lot of information to the other professional before the patient goes in. I'm obviously patient giving consent to, to do that referral. So yes, good question. So towel again, so doing some traction. So looking up a little bit and then kind of pulling kind of straight up like that, that vector. So. Make sure it just doesn't hurt your skin. <laughs> Use a soft towel or some fabric softener when you wash your towels. Um, like kind of like this one, smells pretty nice. So pulling up, holding for a few seconds, relax. Pulling up, holding for a few seconds, relax. If you notice that's kind of helping the pain right away or the intensity of the headache, good to keep doing. Um, there's like, I've seen self-traction devices online that you can purchase pretty cheap. Those wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, so a couple things you could do with a towel. <coughs> Then you got the one with a the ball, so releasing. 
We also have a peanut ball. So two balls connected together. What you could use is like grab a sock, a clean sock and throw a couple of tennis balls in and you can use that. And that gives you the same thing as this. You can roll it for your back too. Um, and again, I believe in being thrifty. So <laughs> two tennis balls or two lacrosse balls would be perfect in a sock. And you got this uh, and save a little bit of money too. So we get through these the, like through Tidex, which is right down the road, great company. Um, and it's relatively cheap. So these balls are like six or seven bucks. So, I mean, you're never gonna break it. But if you have a hockey ball or lacrosse balls at home, it's a good idea to use. So I'm gonna just kind of point this down here. And we're gonna do some other exercises. So I got shorts on today because it's pretty nice weather here. I'm sure BC Laura is pretty nice as it usually is. So, all right, so I'm sitting down. I got this ball. So you wanna do this on the ground, preferably not like your bed because the bed's gonna be a bit too soft. So I got this ball, so this peanut ball. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna lay down and I'm gonna put this on the base of my skull, right? So, I don't know if you can, I might have to adjust this a little bit. So, I'm gonna move some cameras here. You know what, I'm just gonna grab my phone here. That's probably a better view of my sandal. Okay, so <laughs> I got both set up. So, got the ball. I'm laying down. And what I'm doing is I'm putting it kind of on the base of my skull. And I'm just gonna tuck my chin and find where it's sore. So right, right about here. A little bit of pain right up here. So what I'm gonna do, and it actually radiates up onto the top of my head. So meaning that muscle is pretty tight. I hold it there 10, 20, 30 seconds until the pain goes away and then go to the next spot, push in. So yeah, you can tuck your chin, you can extend your head a little bit. Really easy way to, to release some of that pain. Hopefully Zoom could see that too. Good. So that's a couple things you can do in terms of in terms of management, right? So even laying down and doing those chin tucks, so the ones that Rob and I did a couple weeks ago, so tucking your chin, making a double chin. You can't see mine because I got a beard. <laughs> That's why I have a beard, so you can't see my double chins, but now everyone knows too much information. So yeah, that's all set up again. So that's a few things you could do for headaches. Don't want to get into things that are too aggressive just because I don't want, you know, for people to, to be doing too much. So if any of these hurt for these exercises, take it easy, <laughs> right? So doing the trigger point release with this ball, for example, if it starts causing headaches, maybe it's a bit too aggressive, right? So if it's causing a headache, not a bad thing. Then you kind of know exactly what the, where the area you need to, to be to work on. So if you're rolling this out, laying down, and you find like a little bit. So even me, I found a little bit of radiation to the top of my head, which is not a bad thing. That just means that's, a, that's an active trigger point and needs to be released. Um, I'll release it and then after that, I'm fine. So right now I don't have any pain in my head, so that's fine for me to do. If you're having like a headache, severe headache after these exercises, then you should be changing your program a bit. So trying the towel exercise if it's not too sore, if you have a cervicogenic headache. So if you have a headache in which you have a reduced range of motion of your neck, like your neck is sore, then um, do those towel exercises, right? So increase your range of motion, that should help the headache itself. Um, so if the root causes the neck, it's stiff, and then you help it move a little bit better, then your headache should get better. If it's more of a tension type of headache, try these techniques, right? Roll out all those tension points, um, do the chin tucks, and, and see how that goes. Some easy, effective things to do, cheap as well. Another thing that you could do is, so if it's like temporal headaches on the side, 
like I discussed for the jaw, it might, you might have a headache that's associated with the jaw, but you might not even notice any jaw pain. It might just all be kind of on the head here. So what I would do is, again, similar to last week, is to stretch out the skin on your head. So I have my right hand on the top, and then I have my left hand on the bottom, and what I'm trying to do is pull that apart. So I'm pulling apart, holding for 10, 15 seconds, go to the next spot, so the next spot that's sore, pull apart, hold for 10, 15 seconds, and so forth, right? You can go down a little bit lower into the masseter area or up in the temporalis. Um, what you could also do is, you know, poking into different areas that are sore too. So if you have pain along the temporal area, um, just pushing in, holding, right? Some people even push in and pull up, like kind of like this motion, like that, yeah. Um, and that can help quite a bit too. That helps, helps me with my headaches if they're very intense and sharp. So yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to go through today. I know it's a little bit quicker, which is good. So it leaves time for, for questions. I know they kind of come in as we go, but if you do have any questions, you guys can ask them, or if you want to talk about your experience with headaches, you can, you can go live with us. That'd be cool. I say it all the time, but you, no, you don't have to. Um, yeah, some, some, I think that's some good things that people can work on. Um, and if there's any other physios that have any other comments to make, let me know. Lots of different ways to treat headaches, so I'd play around with it too. Be careful with what you look up on Google. Sometimes that stuff can be, you know, not incorrect, but um, Google and those kind of mechanisms or avenues can kind of give you advancements before you're ready for it so trying this stuff out should be should be okay it shouldn't make anything worse unless you have severe chronic headaches um, then maybe go get some help first and then try some of these out so this is for people that have had headaches on and off for for a while um, and maybe at this point they're not too severe so if you have a severe headache currently maybe not try poking in and, and and that kind of stuff could make things a bit worse. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Any questions, guys? We'll give you a few minutes today to, to ask any questions. For those of you that are in Edmonton, the weather is great. So <laughs> I'm sure Vancouver is great too, but um, at least here, like everything's brown green. So, so getting there and I'm pretty excited to go outside today and obviously practice social distancing, but um, you know, getting some sort of activity done outside. It gets sometimes tiring working out in a garage. <laughs> well, I can open up the garage door now, but um, even in the clinic, like I, I get this nice facility, but there's no one around. So it's nice to have the facility, but I miss the social aspect of, of exercise and things like that. So um, we'll give it a couple more minutes for any questions. <clears throat> And then tomorrow we got uh, a discussion about, sorry, someone just went, a discussion about squats. So again, just to promote that a little bit, it's, it's gonna be, if you have any issues with squatting, so if you're looking for depth and things like that, um, thanks for showing those towel stretches. Yes, no worries about me. Try those towel stretches, see how they go. You can text me <laughs> um, as we're family, so you can just shoot out, text me and, and let me know how it goes. Um, yeah, so tomorrow's gonna be squatting. We're gonna look at movement patterns with a squat, and we're gonna look at if you have any pain with your hip flexor, if you have issues with depth, whatever you have with the squat, we're gonna try to answer those questions. We have Evan from Farm, Farmstrong Athletics, the owner of Farmstrong Athletics. He's gonna be discussing some things from the coaching side. And then we have Thursday, which is going to be our running day. So we're going to be discussing running injuries. Rob's going to be, I'm going to give him the, the pursuit of motion phone. So my phone, I'll drop it off outside his house. Uh, so he could use that just so his, his internet or there's something going on. So every time he logs in, it kind of freezes. So I'll give him my, uh, I'll give him my phone to use. For, the, for Thursday and then Friday is pretty exciting to be postnatal exercise. So it's gonna kind of be a continuation of last week's extra, last week's uh, day that we had Brittany Wade in, who's a pelvic floor physio. She discussed 
um, some techniques to do uh, for any pelvic floor issues and now we're going to get more specifically into postnatal activity and how to get back into activity after um, having a baby so how to properly progress going like getting back to the gym so a lot of people that I work with want to get back into resistance training even at farm strong like a lot of people are doing Olympic lifting so it's cool seeing people come back to that so she's going to kind of go through how to progress uh, that activity and how to get stronger so and she did a lot of high level Olympic lifting. So that's going to be cool to see from her end. Um, and she's a personal trainer, strength and conditioning coach. So it's going to be good to get her point of view on things. Um, and this is kind of mashing up the professions, right? So physio, personal trainers, strength and conditioning coaches, nutritionists, everyone should be working together. So this would be great to, to link up with her. Um, and then we'll, maybe we'll make it a series and do something next week um, and get someone maybe to talk about nutrition and stuff like that. So yeah that's gonna be well i got steven from zoom saying it's very nice outside had a scoot out oh, yet again yes very nice i wish i had a scooter i do have a bicycle so i can ride that when i get home um yeah so if there's any questions i'll give you a couple more minutes and yeah that's gonna be the rest of the week next week's kind of open we're gonna do running once a week at least and maybe a lifting thing once a week other than that we got open open for discussion so if you guys want any more details about any injuries or any injuries that you experience anything we haven't covered yet it'd be good to get some recommendations because we can we can talk about mostly everything <laughs> i want to say everything but um there is some research to do in some some cases so a lot of the times i know what exercises i show people but i also want to show people the research behind physio and like why it's actually important rather than just saying just do this and that um yeah so that's it for today, guys. Thanks for coming in. Um, and then we'll see you, see you tomorrow at 12. Peace out.